Okay, hi, Savannah. Um, well, everyone, we have something very exciting today. So this is my friend Savannah, and Savannah and I actually pursued our degree, our undergrad degree in psychology together back in the day. <laughs> and we used to take classes together and study for our exams, drinking wine in her apartment. And now Savannah is pursuing her PsyD, her doctorate from the University of San Francisco. And she reached out to me with a very interesting prospect that is perfect for our community and what we do. And basically, Savannah is doing a study examining some psychological phenomenon in atheists as a population. Uh, and I read your dissertation. I was so impressed by it. It was so interesting the way in your dissertation you almost took an intersectional lens of atheist identity and the way that you integrated like the minority stress theory into that. I was like, oh my God, I never thought about this for my own community and population. So it was so interesting and all the research behind it. And um, so anything else you'd like to introduce about yourself before we explain what this is and how people can get involved? Um, I mean, that's basically it. I will add that I actually knew about the Atheist Republic because I've been a part of this organization too since I was in high school. What? Um, I and- didn't even know this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I grew up in a very conservative and religious area. And um, it was a way that I was able to, to find people online that shared my intersectional identities. And so very full circle moment. Thank, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk about something I'm really proud of. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. So part of what Savannah is doing to complete her doctorate and part of her dissertation is conducting a study on atheists in a psychological context. So what inspired you to study atheists like through this lens and as a population? Absolutely. So, I mean, it started because of the sort of cultural context in which I grew up, uh, where, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't necessarily grow up with people around me that mirrored or appreciated my identities. And being atheist was a huge part of who I was. And that was because I was in religious schools. And very quickly, I realized because of some personal stuff going on in my home, that it's very hard to try and heal and make meaning of the suffering of life when you do not have a community presence um, in a way that mirrors who you are and validates and witnesses your experience here. And so I really, this question of like, how are atheists managing to achieve post-traumatic growth after experiencing trauma uh, was, you know, an important for me to examine personally, but also now professionally. And I'm really excited to be able to contribute to the research body in a way that I feel is really meaningful. (laughs) I, I'm, I'm just like so excited about this because I'm always like looking for studies about this and we talk about it often on our news show. And then I'm like, oh my God, someone is, feels part of my life is literally doing this work. How cool. Um, so yes. what is the name of your study and what are you investigating? Yes. So the name of the study, it's titled The Experience of Post-Traumatic Growth for Atheists. And so I'm studying a primary research question and a secondary one, but the primary one is how do atheists who have experienced trauma achieve post-traumatic growth? And I'm doing this because currently there are no empirically researched studies that exist in the United States that examine this question. Basically, atheists have been Uh, ignored uh, historically in the research body, which is why you can't find any research on them. Uh, And so, yeah, that's what I'm studying. And uh, the the second question that I'll be answering is, to what extent do atheist post-traumatic growth processes overlap with the existing processes that have been studied for theistic populations? That is so fascinating. Oh my God. I'm really excited by this. Um, So what is post-traumatic growth? (laughs) 
Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Did you hear me? I said, what is post-traumatic growth? What is post-traumatic growth? Sorry, I didn't get that. Um, post-traumatic growth is basically positive change that occurs after uh, you know, a struggle with highly challenging life crises of some kind. And it's both a process and an outcome, and it occurs over the days, months, decades uh, after the trauma has occurred. And basically, we see that there are five domains um, that positive changes sort of fall under. The first is changes in how we relate to others. Um, the second is new possibilities in life that maybe we didn't see before. The third is personal strength. So maybe we realize that we are stronger than we thought we were before. Um, and then the spiritual and existential change that follows, I think, is what this study is really tapping into because atheists cannot necessarily, it, it's an existential identity. Um, and the last one is appreciation of life. And so we know that, you know, horrible things basically happen after trauma, and those are well documented. Uh, the research is skewed heavily toward a deficit based lens, and post traumatic growth offers a strengths based lens, which is what I really love about the theory. Wow. Okay. So, who is eligible to take part in your study? Yeah, so you just need to be 18 or older. It's throughout the lifespan, so really any age. Uh, you need to have gone through a trauma of some kind, and you also need to have been atheist before the onset of the trauma. This does not preclude individuals who were religious growing up from participating. They just need to have been atheist before the trauma happened. Uh, you also cannot be currently abusing substances, uh, and you need to read and write past about a sixth grade level and not have been diagnosed with a psychotic disorder in the past. Uh, there is something else I wanted to touch on, and that is that this study is not necessarily for people at the height of their traumatic experience, and that is because it can be destabilizing to talk about trauma with someone you don't have rapport with. Um, me and I don't want to put anyone at risk or in danger. And so this is for people who have integrated and moved beyond a state of traumatic stress. Mm. And I believe you're studying. So you don't have to be American. You just have to have lived in America, in North America, uh, before the onset of the trauma, you don't have to be a citizen, you don't have to have any sort of papers, your identity will be concealed and no one will know of it besides me. Uh, and I think it would actually be a really interesting experience to talk to nationals of other countries who then came and tried to make meaning, experience something horrible and tried to make meaning of it here as an atheist. Oh, cool. So does it matter what their previous faith background was, a aka are you looking exclusively ex-Christians or does anyone qualify? Any faith background you can have, you just need to have identified as atheist before the trauma. So what I'm trying to get at here is that a lot of people will experience trauma and then say, how could a God exist if this happened to me? So I, they, they then become atheist. That is a qualitatively different experience than the one that I'm looking at. Uh, so you can be Southern Baptist before the trauma happens. You can be any of those things as long as you eventually were atheist before. Okay, that's really helpful information. And uh, has this study received IRB approval? And if I wanted to find out more information about your study, including IRB information, where could I find that? Yes. So it received IRB approval a few months ago. I think it was in June. And thank you. <laughs> uh, and I have the IRB document and I have sent it to Susanna so she can, I figure, maybe post it in the description or include it in an email attachment of some kind. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, for those who don't know, IRB approval is basically it's received like approval and the say so from like an ethics board. <laughs> it's very important for conducting. Yes. Uh, research with human subjects. And Savannah did a good exactly. job. <laughs> and um, so if I uh, uh, qualify for the survey and if I'm eligible, what does participation entail? 
So basically there will be a survey link um, that will be also in the description of this video. And you'll be able to follow that sur survey link to Qualtrics and you can uh, fill in all of your answers. And if you are eligible, I will reach out to you to schedule an interview time. And that interview time will be 120 minutes and we will go over informed consent. I will get your signature. We will go through the interview and then we will part ways and I'll you know, write my study and eventually publish it. So it will be accessible to people who would like to read it. Amazing. Um, and do I receive or any participant receive any compensation for their participation? Unfortunately, no, I'm receiving no private or public funding for this project. Um, so it is sort of a passion project, if you will, <laughs> if you would like to contribute in that way. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, no, there, there's not the funds being put aside uh, to provide compensation. Yeah, it's completely voluntary, which means you can also drop out at any time that you want. Um, and exactly. if I'm interested, how can I sign up? How can I put my name in the hat? <laughs> so basically, as long as you fill out the survey, um, you, I will then reach back out to you and ask if you would like to proceed. And that would be how you sign up. So the first step is just completing the survey and seeing if you're eligible. Fantastic. And uh, you kind of touched on this already, but will my identity be protected? Because that's really important to a lot of our community. And what happens to their data afterwards? Absolutely. So remaining anonymous um, and everything will be confidential, that leads back to who you are. Um, however, what will be used is transcripts from the interview in the dissertation document. And anything that could be traced back to your identity, uh, where you live, your birthday, anything like that will not be included. And once the uh, interviews have been analyzed, everything will be destroyed to never be seen again. And um, the only thing that will live on is the dissertation document. Amazing. And um, this is a fun question. How would my participation or any potential participants participation further the study of atheists? Yes. So the short answer to this question is that atheists have not been studied in a capacity that I don't think any of us are happy with. Um, Atheists have been studied in terms of demographic characteristics of them. Uh, for instance, we know that they're more likely to be male than female and live in certain parts of the U.S. as opposed to others. Uh, but little is known about the subjective human experience of being atheist in this country. And absolutely nothing is known about the subjective lived experience of being atheist, having experienced trauma, and then achieved some level of post-traumatic growth after the fact. My ultimate goal for this project, you know, you know, of course there's research implications, but more so I want to provide a how to guide of how to survive after trauma for people that are looking for some sort of mentorship or person to look to, to, to prove to themselves that it's possible. And that was what this document is. It's to amplify stories that I think matter and that don't have, um, you know, a way to be heard by the vast majority of Americans. And I'm really hoping to contribute to the field in that way. And eventually with these results, you know, other researchers can continue on and start studying questions that people haven't necessarily taken the time to answer yet as it pertains to this population. Wow. I love the way you speak about these things. Like I actually just got shivers a little bit. Um, and I think what you're talking about and what you're investigating probably really speaks to like the curiosity and experience of a lot of our community. So I can imagine a lot of people will be really interested in this and excited about the opportunity to contribute to this field. Um, that's really kind of the reward of participation. Um, so Thank you so much for approaching Atheist Republic with this opportunity. When I read your dissertation and you talked about like your methodology and population, and you're like, an Atheist Republic, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, that's us. <laughs> um, so 
<laughs> it's a uh, really exciting and I'm so like hopeful for your research and uh, I'm very proud of you too. <laughs> oh, thank you, Susanna. I'm, I'm proud of myself, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to deny the fact that there is, you know, a personal, like deeply passionate part of me that has wanted to do this for a very long time. And I benefit off of doing this as well. I think we as a community do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so happy to be here and to be able to give back to, to you know, to people who frankly showed me that I wasn't alone mm -hmm. and to, to add to that narrative that none of us are. So thank you. Oh my God. I love this so much. I'm so excited. So guys, everyone, if you're watching this, please complete the recruitment questionnaire. All the information will be down below in the description. And um, yeah, feel free to, I think I'll also include some of your contact information. And if people have other further questions yep. that they want to clarify before they decide if they want to participate, they'll have the opportunity to do that because that's important as well. Um, so thank you so much, Savannah. And uh, I'm really excited about this in your future. So. I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy about this. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Suzanne. I really appreciate it.